Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at how you can implement a governance policy inside Studio. And we'll look at what is available today. And then in the next video that's coming out in a couple of days, we'll look at what is on the horizon from UiPath. So make sure you click the little red watermark down in the right hand corner and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified and be among the first to know when a new video comes out. So let's get to it. So a governance policy is basically a set of rules that the developers will have to work inside of when building their automations. And if you are an individual developer, you might think, oh, no, I don't want those kinds of policies. But really you do, because if you work within a well-defined and well-thought-out governance policy, you will see the quality of your work be, let's say, much more aligned with what management expects. You'll also learn a lot. And for example, if it's decided that you must use the workflow analyzer before publishing or running a project, you will see the quality of your code improve very quickly because of that. So what you can do inside of Studio, we looked at in a video a couple of weeks ago, and that was, you know, there's a lot of settings at both the project level and at the Studio level. And at the Studio level, if we go into the Home menu and into the Settings menu, you have different pages with different types of settings. You know, what kind of uh, general settings do we have, design settings? Do we want to enforce the use of Workflow Analyzer? Do we want to use modern design experience? Where, where are my files stored? You know, what kind of sources do I have access to as far as packages go? All those kinds of things can be defined from a central location and then deployed out to your developers. And the way you do that is you basically can do it inside of Studio. You just set up whatever settings you like. For example, I'm going to enforce that we use uh, the modern design experience and uh, object repository. It'll have to reload my project. We'll let it do that. And once that's done, what I can do is in the help menu, I can generate a governance file. And you click this button here, and then you want to select the classic option. The modern option we'll get to uh, in the next video. But the classic policy file, I'll store it here in a folder on my desktop, and the file name is going to be uipathpolicies.config. And if we save that, and then go have a look at it, we'll open the folder, and we can see that the file is here. If I open it with Notepad, we can see that this is a JSON file containing all of the settings that we just defined inside of Studio. Now, what can we do with this file? Well, if I open another file explorer, and go to my app data UiPath folder on my lo local computer, then if I copy this file to that folder and start UiPath Studio again, we should see if we go to the settings menu and the design menu that these options are now locked because they're defined inside the file we just saved out to our C drive. Now, instead of deploying that file to all of the development machines, what you can also do is you can change a key in the registry. So if we open regedit, we can see that there's a key called computer H key current user software UI path. And in here we can add a new string value. And that string value needs to be governance source. And then we need to add, and we'll just close UI path studio here. And we will actually delete the file that we put inside of this uh, UiPath folder on my C drive. And then we will add the path to the file that we exported up here. So that is in this folder right here. And it is called uipathpolicies.config. And now it's stored inside my registry. So if I open Studio now, we will see the same set of rules being enforced that were in that policy file that we are referring to from the registry key. Now, there is one more option, and I kind of like this way of doing it. So let's jump into my orchestrator. And here we will go to the tenant level and then go to folders. And then we're going to create a new uh, folder. So we'll create a new folder, and that is going to be called, and this is important, UiPath Settings config and then inside of this folder we can do two things if we go to the folder we can add an asset and one asset we can add is called uipath.studio.governance source and the value of that asset needs to be the path to a server that is accessible via http so it would be something like this http colon slash slash some server 
and then the name of the file itself. This would then point to the same policy file again, but this time it'll do it from the orchestrator that the developer or the studio is connected to. And that way it will enforce uh, the policy in this file. Another option that I like even better, and let me just minimize this a little bit, close down studio, we'll close, we'll, we'll actually delete the key from the registry. And then we'll open the governance file again. Notepad, I will select everything and copy it to my clipboard. Go back into studio, and then I'll change the name of the asset to be governance policy at the end here. And then in the value, I'll simply paste the entire contents of the file that I created. So now everything is actually stored inside of Orchestrator and there's no need to connect to a server that may or may not be accessible. Now, of course, the users that need to sort of adhere to this new policy, let me just maximize this. They need to be added to the folder. So I go into the folder and into the settings here for that folder. We can see that the user that I'm using right now actually is added because that's the user I'm using to make these changes. So again, now if I close my orchestrator and start up UiPath Studio, the governance policy is now going to be read from the asset in orchestrator and applied to this instance of Studio. So if I go to my settings, go to my design tab, we can see that the policy is still enforced. So those were three ways of enforcing some development governance. You can do it through a local file, through a file that is referenced inside of your registry, or you can do it by either referencing a file from Orchestrator or by actually putting the contents of the policy inside of Orchestrator. Now, of course, these are not changes that you as a developer should be making because that defeats the whole purpose of doing these things. So doing this is the responsibility of whoever is in charge of your development platform. But to that end, it's a very powerful set of options. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at something that is currently in preview. And that's very exciting stuff if you like this kind of stuff, because that is really just a new way of doing this that's just on the horizon. So subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Bye.